you hear guys advocating, come to Sasua, come to the Dominican Republic, have fun, assemble your team, increase your body count numbers, they say. I, I don't make this up. But listen to me. Men in their 50s or 60s or 40s or 30s and even younger are all pushing this perverted narrative. These are not high quality men. They are low level men. And we'll talk about this right after this message. We're going to continue in my series called The Truth, Common Sense, and the Belief in What's Right and continue to talk one more time about these uh, YouTubers and people who participate in the YouTube uh, sphere and content on the Dominican public and particularly in Puerto Plata, Sua content as well. And I want to talk about something that I came across a few days ago on a YouTube live stream. Uh, that was recommended to me, um, you know, on my channel. It was a YouTube recommendation. And as I was driving, I tuned in to listen up. And I should say, I wasn't too surprised by what I heard, but I was surprised by the ultimate lack of reserve, consideration, the downright lack of decency in what I was hearing and what was being displayed. These men on this particular panel were advocating uh, sex tourism around the world and particularly here in the uh, Dominican Republic. We all know about the issue uh, in the Dominican Republic. We are not um, uh, obscure to what's going on in the Dominican Republic. I have spoken about it numerous times before on this channel. But this absolute absurdity has to be challenged. It cannot go unchecked men grown men many of whom act like boys saying that prostitution is healthy quote unquote encouraging men to go to foreign destinations and to come to the Dominican Republic specifically to quote and I'm quoting get their rocks off pay for play and just simply leave as they say there are men that have uh, more um, that have in my opinion, a serious lack of judgment, a lack of class, and over and over over all of this, a lack of, of common decency. They are not gentlemen in any sense of the word. So what is it? Sex tourism. For those of you who don't know, it is, and I'm quoting, plan travel specifically designed for sexual purposes especially in destinations where commercial sex is unrestricted or under restricted they these tourists go to places where they know that there is a lack of restrictions on the sexual services and activities with residents of the country that they are in the youtubers that have been highlighted on my channel and other channels before. Uh, Passport Brothers, uh, specifically, um, uh, as well as those are, that do frequent and attend and comment and participate in panels, love to promote places like Thailand, Philippines, Brazil, obviously the Dominican Republic, Colombia, the Big Five, as it were. They also, occasionally, you'll hear uh, Kenya, Cambodia, and some other places. But those are pretty much the, the main countries where their destinations are. And what's unique about those countries? They are countries with a high poverty level, high poverty rates. And they go to these places because they know that poverty, ladies and gentlemen, is a motivator for women and for kids to engage in sexual activity legally or illegally. Sex tourism feasts and it thrives on impoverished, imp poverty and in those that are impoverished. 
many of these so-called tourists, oddly enough, come from, you know, the United States. They come from well-to-do areas. But this is a classic case of what many have called and have defined as exploitation. The exploitation of desperate women, kids, and in some cases, men for sex. Now, they will tell you that their money is helping the country. It's helping the economy. It provides income for the local uh, neighborhoods and economy. But I contend and I maintain overall that the negative aspects far outweigh any of those that they may claim as being positive. First of all, one of the number one negative aspects of this is the spread of diseases. You can read this online. You can read it just about anywhere when it comes to prostitution. And they're talking about prostitution. They talk about the prevalency of sexually transmitted diseases, STDs, and HIV. One YouTuber the other day, which I've done a video on recently, he just gloated about how he doesn't use condoms, how he implored other travelers and tourists that are there for those purposes not to engage in safe sex, not to put on condoms, to take the condoms off. And as he says, he prefers, quote unquote, going raw. This is what you're hearing. Despite what the facts are, this is what they spew. For some reason, they think it's okay in the DR. They think it's okay to just do whatever you want in Sosua specifically. You see, many of these young women, girls, boys, even older women, they lack education. And to some extent, they have very poor, how do you say, access or uh, information about, about health and health-related issues. But yet many of these perverts advocate for men to come to Sasua to engage in sex with these girls, these young girls, without protected sex, resulting in an increase of STDs and, in many cases, pregnancies. These are the facts. Sasua has a negative reputation. So subsequently, it gives the DR a negative reputation. This reputation affects the livelihoods of many. It turns off investors. And as I have said before, in my opinion, the negative um, uh, reputation aids and increases unemployment and keeps people away from an area that might be otherwise thriving uh, with economic uh, investments and business. Many of these women face stigmatization stig stigmatization in their own communities some that i have read in the newspapers are forced into a kind of modern day slavery and sex trafficking many people say oh it doesn't really happen no it doesn't really happen ladies and gentlemen pick up the newspapers read the news go online google search it you will see that it does happen yes even today Sex tourism in the DR corrupts the moral values of the country. But Passport Brothers and promoters of sex tourism are, and supporters, they simply, simply don't care. They just don't care. Here's what I wish would happen to curb this problem. And I know I'm a voice just, just crying in the wilderness. I know that there are some... Um, YouTubers out there, are some channels out there that go hardcore at the uh, 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 Passport Brothers. But yet, at the same time, they advocate people using prostitutes. It makes no sense to me. It's a double standard. Number one, the Dominican Republic, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, needs to solve this issue themselves. I've said this in other videos. This sex tourism and its promotion and its support uh, for uh, sex tourism in the DR is bad for the Dominican Republic, its country, and its people. 
And in my opinion, the Dominican Republic government and the people should quickly and strongly promote more strict laws and prohibit sex tourism and the promotion of sex tourism and prostitution. And I say the government should punish and prohibit all these that are involved in sex tourism and promotion of prostitution. This includes, yes, the sex tourists, it computes the promoters of such, those that are offering trips and travel to the Dominican Republic, those who are promoting uh, such stuff on, on YouTube and social media. If they could go after them, they damn well should. Anybody who facilitates it should be prosecuted. Anyone caught in prostitution should be persecuted to the full extent of the law. Buying or selling strict laws discourage this type of activity. Now I know there will be a lot of flack and that's okay. But I do believe that that is a possible solution among many solutions to the problem. Secondly, the Dominican Republic government should work more closely with governments in the United States, in Canada, in Europe, any of those countries that have uh, like-mindedness uh, when it comes to this issue of sex tourism and traveling uh, for sex, especially when it comes to traveling for sex for, for minors. We all know we all know that it is prevalent in the Dominican Republic. We know that it's prevalent in Sisua. But if you exploit children and if you get caught, there should be a strong statement that you will be prosecuted both by the Dominican Republic and by your home country. In this case, let's say the United States. They're working in dual collaboration. And I believe with such a strong statement and practice, this too will become a deterrent. Thirdly, there needs to be a clamp down on the facilitators and the advocates of sex tourism, as I kind of already mentioned. Sex tourism throws a lot of people, individuals, into a lot of problems. But we also know that sex tourism thrives in some cases with companies and businesses that thrive on that business. Uh, people who promote and support traveling abroad for prostitutes, there needs to be a clamp down on those, as I've said. People who advocate and align with those who support it. See, I, I, I keep repeating this, and let me just say this again. When you watch these YouTube channels, listen carefully to what you're hearing. Listen carefully to those who are joining these panels and who are opining. And they are showing their support, their agreement for the travel for sexual purposes and for prostitution. Some people offering trips to people to, 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 to put together groups, group trips and travel to come for those purposes. And it would be my advice that anyone caught doing this needs to get the full whip of the law. For, as the Dominican government has been doing and is doing little by little, they need to clean up the sewer, the sewer. Have some economic development in the area as they have planned and they continue to plan, they continue to talk about uh, in Puerto Plata as well in Sosua. I've read several articles where they are moving forward with that, but by cleaning up the sewer, you will take away uh, that element. Fifth, and this is probably one of the more important ones if they were not in any particular numerical order, but it is one of the more important ones. The government and the people really need to address seriously the social economic conditions which drive this industry and make this industry flourish. Unemployment. There's a lack of education, good quality education. There's poverty, obviously, due to the unemployment. Uh, and then, of course, I've talked about this many times, there is corruption. These are the things that have to be addressed, that have to be um, 
uh, looked at, have to be uh, things, uh, policies and procedures need to be put into place where this stuff has to be delineated. In order to reduce sex tourism, the exploiters and the exploiters, the Dominican Republic needs to focus on these areas. They need to continue to encourage investment by investors to come to the DR, to place investment in the DR, to, provide, to help provide jobs for those that are in need of employment in the Dominican Republic. Sex tourism in the Dominican Republic, the promotion of sex tourism in the Dominican Republic is an academic. The rhetoric that you hear on YouTube such as, it's the world's oldest profession. It is their livelihood. It empowers a woman. To me, is frankly BS. And I suggest that if you were to ask any of these women who walk the streets selling themselves, offering services, if you ask them if they enjoyed their profession, I would suggest, and I would pretty much guess that maybe one out of 500 would give you a categorical yes. Many are forced into this profession because it is a mean of getting badly needed money. They have no other choice. They have a family to support, to support perhaps. Some as I've already mentioned, are trafficked into the sex industry against their own free will. And so is it really simply pay for play? Is it all fun and games? Is it just simply just getting your rocks off and leaving and come back again another time? Is it just sex or has it now become rape? Look, the Dominican Republic is a beautiful country with much to see and to do. And it is a shame that these content providers on YouTube, when they come to talk about the Dominican Republic, they typically talk about one place and one place only. So Sua, perhaps Porta Plata, maybe Boca Chica, and occasionally Punta Cana. They're talking about relationships. They're talking about how to pick up women, how to get women, how to buy prostitutes, how to, to trick with prostitutes. All of this is what you hear in their conversations on YouTube. As if there's nothing else to talk about in the Dominican Republic. Allow me to repeat myself clearly. Traveling for sex tourism is both morally reprehensible and it is illegal. Even if prostitution is legal in the Dominican Republic, if you are participating in any form of human trafficking, non-consensual sex, sex with minors, child pornography, these are all criminal offenses. Both are punishable by the Dominican Republic and the U.S. or perhaps your home country. Know that. And if you encourage men and women to come to the DR for prostitutes, you are equally reprehensible. Let me repeat that. If you encourage men or women to go or to come to the Dominican Republic for prostitutes, you are equally reprehensible. In conclusion, I call out all of these who agree with me, all of those who agree with me, Dominicans, Dominican Americans, Americans with morals and values, women with a conscience to stand up and help solve this issue. The Dominican Republic, it is said, has up to 100,000 sex workers. And many of those are, in fact, underage. And if you're in the Dominican Republic and you suspect someone is a victim of possibly of sex trafficking, I encourage you to report it to authorities. I encourage you also because there are organizations that are out there, there are businesses that are out there to help protect, there are foundations that are out there that want to help protect youth and protect children. I encourage you to find out these, these organizations and support them with your time or your funds. 
support businesses, particularly in the Dominican Republic that you know are employing people and trying to get people a chance to make a, an opportunity to, to, to get a step ahead. I encourage you to stay out of hotels, resorts that participate or encourage sex tourism. These are some of the small things that you can do. Not everybody's going to get online and you make a YouTube or a TikTok or an Instagram or whatever it is that you use to, 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 to go after this. But if you can, I, I applaud you and I, and I support you with that. But there are some other things that you can do. So take a look at that and give that some consideration. As I mentioned earlier, corruption in the Dominican Republic is rampant, and it is particularly rampant in this, in this issue, in this sex industry, uh, sex tourism industry. And in my opinion, the government and the local, thir local author authorities currently, it appears to me, that the interests and the, even the judicial system is very lax and not prosecuting as it should. I believe that they are perhaps because of the corruption paid off uh, by bribes from traffickers, the traffickers that are paying off officials, paying off politicians, etc. I'm almost convinced that the corruption extends and exists in the private sector too. I believe it's in the media because the media, especially on television news, uh, print uh, journalism rarely reports on the sewage and the perversion and the exploitation and the abuse as much as they should. But perhaps, too, they are being paid for not covering uh, these issues. You know what's so troubling? I don't know if you knew this or not. The other day I read that even in Porta Plata, and I believe it was in Cabrera, uh, they were supposed to have a, a jazz festival and some other type of festival in Porta Plata that both cities had to cancel it. And they were canceling it basically because of the reputation and what they were seeing on these streets with the predominance of sex tourism and prostitution. Cultural activities are canceled for the general public to enjoy because of what's going on. It is troubling. It is troubling that so many ignore this. It is troubling that so many support sex trafficking, sex tourism, prostitution by overtly supporting and blindly supporting to some extent this stuff. They tend to ask themselves, well, if I'm against it, what's in it for me? Rather than ask themselves, is this acceptable? Is it right? No, this issue seems to get ignored. It gets neglected. It gets pushed aside. Ah, oh, go to Sasua. Get your groove on. Get your thing on. Get your rocks off. Enjoy yourself. Pay for play. Leave. This, my friends, is the corrupt mind. This is is the mind of a person without morals, without decency. It is a corrupt soul. It sends a message that if you have dollars, you can buy anything, even the body of a woman for sex or a young girl or underage children. Sadly, too many local leaders thrive on the industry. As I mentioned, they're collecting money to support a lifestyle that they have that they don't want to give up despite the participation of what is going on in the city. There is an obsession with sex and filth on these YouTube streets. There are derelicts. There are degenerates who do nothing but promote what should be quieted. There are panel members, both male and female, who promote the normalization of the very thing society and that we once, con that we once condemned. It's like a plague spreading, like the epidemic of COVID-19. Every day, 
these folks try to get you to acclimate and to accept it as status quo. You know who you are. I do hope this video offends you. I do hope you are annoyed. I also hope that many of you will open your eyes and see what's happening. Think about this. Men frequently calling women bitches, hoes, etc. Without any regard, without any hesitation. It's appalling. There are men who are educated men encouraging their kids to take advantage of sex tourism. It's a, de de it's a degeneracy. And they're encouraging their kids to do it while they're young, to live it up, to get it out of their system. How foolish people are to promote and moreover believe such a thing. I don't make this up. Listen to some of these videos and you'll hear it. The issue is a real issue. This is a serious issue. It needs to be addressed. I hope and I pray that one day we will never have to talk about this ever again. Just this week, a friend of mine and I were talking about uh, this very issue. And he sent me a clip of two separate YouTubers whose claims to fame was that they were among the original mongers some years ago. But now they tout how they have pretty much left the so-called mongering lifestyle. But yet, have they? They are still on uh, their channels promoting the lifestyle promoting addiction. These men are not men, but they are boys. You hear guys advocating once again to come to Sasua, to come to the DR, to have fun, to assemble your team, to increase your body count, your numbers. I don't make this up. But listen to me. Men in their 50s, or 60s, or 40s, or 30s, and younger are all pushing this perverted narrative. These are not high quality men. They are low level men. There I said it. They are insecure. Listen to them. They are frustrated. They are disappointed. They are angry towards women. They have low self esteem because they believe, they think that they aren't equal, that they aren't good enough. They're not in shape. They're fat. They're not wealthy enough. They don't make enough money. They don't have a good job. They then believe that they can get a boost by having sex in the DR and then all those negative feelings will simply just dissipate and go away. They feel more like a man but they are insecure. Searching, seeking for a need for validation, thirsting for approval, your approval, your cash apps. They want your good job, slaps on the back. They want a desire, they have a desire to be a real man that's what's actually going on in their mind. Again, promoters, revelers, supporters, defenders, advocates, backers, allies, fiends, decrepits, proponents. Some are uh, crusaders and, 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 and promoters of such evil and degeneracy. Wanting to sleep with poor women who have been forced into a life of sex work. And in turn, they have become degenerate hedonistic, shallow. And so I'm puzzled. Why on earth are there folks that actually want to promote this garbage, this prostitution? It's exploitative. I've spoken this uh, many, many times before in some of my channel, on my channel and some of my um, uh, videos. It's degrading. It basically does nothing more than turn women into meat being bought and sold on a butcher's meat market. Listen, I get it. Tourism is important in the Dominican Republic. But the Dominican Republic does not need this kind of tourism. It doesn't need the kind of tourism that brings people to its shores for, for, for exploitation of women. 
for people who come there to have multiple orgies with prostitutes, to have and to be able to use drugs, to binge drink. This is not the tourism that the Dominican Republic needs. This tourism that is being promoted here on many of these other channels thrives on trafficking of women and kids, of exploitation. And it needs to stop. Prostitution, contrary to what these advocates will tell you, and what they would have you believe, is not glamorous. It is a sex trade where women and kids are selling their bodies on the street, in restaurants, in bars, and clubs, in strip clubs, in cars, in apartments, in Airbnbs, not because they want to but because they generally have a lack of choices and we need to somehow find a way to put a stop to the glorification to the promotion of this prostitution and sex tourism around the world and in this case and for the purpose of this channel here in the Dominican Republic I know it's a tall task. I know it's an impossibility to some extent, but someone needs to speak on it. Someone needs to tell the truth. Someone needs to bring out the common sense. This trade is not glamorous. Many of you know that men from all over the world come and pray on the women and the kids in the Dominican Republic. Many stories have been told. Many of these perverts are braggadocious about their exploits by uh, sharing it on social media, posting it on social media, messaging apps and groups, many of which are just totally disgusting in behavior. You know what I'm talking about. Men who are at home married doing things with these women, asking these women to do things that they would never ask their wives to do or have their wives perform. Many of these Johns are taking their perverted desires and wishes to the streets, to the women, uh, to the prostitutes, asking to be peed on, urinating on prostitutes presenting all kinds of fetish to these women, whether it be foot fetishes, bondage, anal fetishes, cross-dressing, role-playing, some even uh, wanting to dress up as young girls, rape role-playing. Oftentimes there's sometimes, I should say, uh, as I heard and I read, there is borderline physical abuse there's choking, hair pull, slapping, and in some cases, rape. Oh, but wait a minute, they say. You know, it's their choice. They want to do it. They're making a quick buck. And then there are others who will say, yeah, get in, do it, get in, and get at it, enjoy. You paid for it. Enjoy it. There are times that these women have to go through multiple men at the same same time. Gang bangs, rapes, sometimes drunken and stone clients, pressuring them to take drugs with them. Oftentimes angry, drunk men. And we know that they're not pleasant. Listen, my disdain, my commenting, my reporting, my sharing of this is not because it's simply a moral or religious issue. It could be. But it is more so for me an issue of exploitation of women and kids. And for those who partake in it and for those who promote it, prostitution, sex tourism, especially in the Dominican Republic, needs to stop. And so I pose a question in conclusion. A question that I'm sure you've heard asked many, many times. 
for those of you who turn your cheek the other way, for those of you who say it's okay for men to hook up with prostitutes, and for those of you who even encourage that they do so, do so I ask you, and you know who you are, if your son came home and told you that he was marrying a prostitute, how would you feel? How would you react? If your daughter came home to you and told you that she's going to prostitute herself, are you just going to sit there and say, yeah, go on, do your thing. I'm very proud of you. I think we both know the answer. From me to you, Dominican Rendezvous.